Here I've got a nice little number theory problem involving a perfect cube from Vietnam. So we want to suppose that we've got natural numbers A, B, and C satisfying the following equation. So we've got C plus 1 over B equals A plus B over A. And we want to use this kind of given relationship to prove that A times B is equal to M cubed. So in other words, A times B is a perfect cube. Okay, so let's maybe see how we can get started. Well, this fact that C and A are outside of fractions really means that we can rewrite this equation so that the stuff that is wrapped up inside of fractions is an integer. So let's start by that. So let's notice that we have B over A minus 1 over B is the same thing as C minus A. That's just rearranging this blue boxed equation. But C minus A is most definitely an integer. Well, that's because A and C are natural numbers, so their difference is an integer. Okay, but now we can do some arithmetic on this right-hand side of our equation. So let's maybe give this a common denominator. Notice the common denominator will obviously be A times B. So that's going to give us b squared minus a over a times b is an integer. So that follows from this kind of rewriting of our given equation. Okay, so let's see what we can do from there. Well, the fact that this is an integer means the numerator is a multiple of the denominator. So that means we can write b squared minus a as k times a b for some integer k. Okay, great. Okay, and then we can rewrite this a couple of different ways. So notice we can start by rewriting this as a equals b times ka minus b. Okay, so that's just rewriting that thing a little bit, kind of solving for a. We can also solve this for b squared, and we'll see that b squared is equal to a times kb minus 1. But now we look at this and we say that means a is a multiple of b and b squared is a multiple of a. So that kind of setup is pretty special. Now I'm going to collapse these numbers together. So I'll rewrite this as m. So I have a is equal to m times b. And then likewise, I'll take this stuff and collapse it together into x. So we have b squared is equal to a times x. And so now I'll just go ahead and throw these two equations, which I have in red, together. So I'll take this version of a and plug it in here. So let's see what that gives us. That gives me b squared is equal to, well, a, but notice that's m times b. So I can write that as m times b times x. But check it out, I can just cancel the x from both sides and I'm left with b is equal to m times x. But now, throwing that back into this equation, I see that that means that a is equal to m squared times x. And just kind of as a little thing to point out really quickly, that means that ab is equal to m cubed times x squared. Okay. But notice m cubed is already a perfect cube, so we just need to show that x squared is a perfect cube. And how this works out is usually when we've got this like extra term here, this extra term is extra special nice. So what's maybe the simplest perfect cube? Well, it's probably one cubed, which is equal to one. So keeping that in mind, I'll just put probably here we have x is equal to 1. Now, not definitely, but probably. And that's just because a lot of times these things work out more nicely than they really have to for the solution to occur. And that's like actually a really, 
And that's actually a really important trick to keep in mind whenever you're solving problems like this is these problems are probably not on the edge of possibility. There's probably some really nice thing built into the writing of these problems, like this x being probably equal to one. Okay, so now let's kind of keep that in mind that we're probably going to get back to the place where x is equal to 1 and use what we know for sure, which is b is equal to a mx, a is equal to m squared x, along with some of our previous work to finish this off. So what we'll do is take these two purple boxed equations and plug them in to one of our original observations, which was b squared minus a over ab is an integer. So let's see, that's going to tell us that m squared x squared, notice that's b squared, minus m squared x, notice that that is a, over a times b, which was m cubed x squared is an integer. But we can factor some stuff out of this and cancel. So let's see how we can rewrite this numerator via factoring. We can take an m squared x out of the numerator, and we're left with x minus 1. And then we can similarly factor an m squared x out of the denominator, and we'll be left with mx. So let's notice that this m squared x and this m squared x will cancel and we're left with x minus one over m times x is an integer. Okay, nice. But notice the fact that that's an integer means the numerator is a multiple of the denominator. So we have x minus one is equal to m times x times y, where y is some integer. Okay. So let's see where we can go from there. I'm going to rearrange this to solve for 1. Notice that tells us that 1 is equal to x times 1 minus my. Okay, but now if 1 is equal to the product of two integers, then that means those integers are both plus or minus 1. So here we have x is actually equal to plus or minus 1. Again, that's the only way that you can take the product of two integers and get the number 1. That's kind of obvious. But again, from our original observation up here, where b is equal to mx, a is equal to m squared x, we see that x must be positive because a is positive and b is positive. So that means we have x is actually equal to 1. But now we can go back to our green thing right here and just plug in the thing which was probably true, which is now definitely true, and we see that a, b is equal to m cubed as needed. And that's a good place to stop.